but this is about an oppressive fucked up system designed to keep niggas down and shit. Y'all wouldn't know nothing about that. What about you, little nigga? You know about that? Yes. Oh, you know about that? Tell me what you know about that. Tell me what you think about that. I turn up when it's real in the field. This for my niggas that kneel on the field. Light skinned nigga, you gon' find me in the field. House niggas looking at a nigga like chill. I go hard when it's real in the field. This for my niggas that kneel on the field. Light skinned nigga, find me in the field. I don't give a fuck how a house nigga feel. Belly of the beast, we've been living in hell. They like, damn Kai, how could you tell? Put us in the project, set us up to fail. Round here, bullets be flying like hell. Too many of my niggas either dead or in jail. Make a nigga work when you locked in a cell. Can't find work when you out on bail. But your homie got the work, so we passed you a scale. Got them birds like the Bible got quail. Niggas selling out because they mama got bills. Turn into coons like Oprah and Gale. How you sell your soul just to get a little kale? They put you in a dress when you get a record deal. Want to see a nigga getting high on pills. You can dance on a pole, you can sell that tale, but they never tell a nigga that he can go to Yale. We all credit equal, that's white males. All lives matter, not black males. Another mother crying, another coffin got a nail. How many brothers out here got killed? How many of our sisters out here got a heal? How many more caps got to get peeled? We beef with each other so quick to pull the steel. George Zimmerman still alive and well. I turn up when it's real in the field. This for my niggas that nail on the field. Light skinned nigga, you can find me in the field. House niggas looking at a nigga like chill. I go hard when it's real in the field. This for my niggas that nail on the field. Light skin nigga find me in the field i don't give a fuck how a house nigga feel i turn up when it's real in the field feel this for my niggas that nail on the field feel light skin nigga you gonna find me in the field feel house niggas looking at a nigga like chill chill yo chill industrial complex is a system situated at the intersection of government and private interests it uses prisons as a solution to social political and economic problems it includes human rights violations the death penalty, slave labor, policing, courts, the media, political prisoners, and the elimination of dissent. They just want us to die in silence. They just want us to die in silence. I might start me a fucking riot. Slave rebellion, no compliance. They just want us to die in silence. They murder minds that like they got a license. I pray for the coronavirus to kill all of these violent tyrants. They prey on us like they poaching lions. World War III's on the horizon. Black and Hispanics form alliance. From the West Coast to the islands, this pressure is making diamonds. They go waking, sleeping giants. I turn up when it's real in the field. This for my niggas that kneel on the field. Light skinned nigga, you can find me in the field. House niggas looking at a nigga like chill i go hard when it's real in the field this for my niggas that kneel on the field light skinned nigga find me in the field i don't give a fuck how a house nigga feel i turn up when it's real in the field feel i don't give a fuck how a house nigga feel but feel feel nigga, did you just say what i was trying to say was smarter now i'm telling you man really ain't gonna believe that I got a baby in my arms while I'm doing this. <laughs> Little Zahar, man, won't be quiet, but check it out, yo. Yo. Playing spades, reminiscing on days before niggas started shooting, we would still catch fades. It's like the world's a lot scarier since crack and AIDS. And the only thing that we became is rats in a maze. Cause all my brother cares about is trapping in jays. Minds fucked up from the pills and the haze. Pop said we hard headed, stuck in our ways. So I've been praying to the most side and it's just a phase, yup. Hardly surprised and always amazed. Especially at what's been getting radio plays, yo. I want to be the cataclysm of a cataclysm. Bomb atomically and take it back to lyricism. But you know nowadays, it seems like it's forbidden. Anybody in the industry knows they ain't fucking with them. And anyone on sign, they want to be outshined. So I guess it's just me, myself, and all these empty lines. I never knew that being nice would get you penalized. Once you blowing up, they want to know your penis size. Hoes all staring, saying you got dreamy eyes. And if you ain't fake, they want to see you demonized. If they be dropping gems, then it's slow as El Dorado. A midnight marauder, young desperado with a bravado. That's a hard act to follow. Make your favorite rapper look like amateurs at the Apollo. <laughs> Yo, and that's a hard pill to swallow Me and my vato steady painting pictures like Picasso Feds 
trying to clock us like Pablo and Gustavo. Go and tell, go and tell, straight to the Gustavo. Hola, muchacho, yo hablo espanol. El hombre blanco es el diablo. <laughs> now I'm going over heads like a poncho. Trying to stack chips with more cheese than some nachos. Why you acting macho? Your whole clique is got though. They ain't want beef, but I feel it like a taco, yo. Don't get it twisted like a rasta. Don't be bringing none of that bullshit into me casa. You ain't seen this much crack since the Contras. Belly of the beast, we all live inside a monster. That's why I be thanking God I'm alive. Tapping into different vibes, penning more than a scribe. Every verse an open letter sent to all the tribes. Lost in the ghetto, steady struggling to survive, yo. The things I seen with a pair of eyes. Got me out here living in this life desensitized. Part of the reason that I'm hardly if ever surprised. I've heard the screams of brothers and seen mothers that cried. Seen a soul leave a body right before he died. 23 years old, gunned down before his prime. While your favorite rapper only talking dollar signs. But when our people in trouble, they quiet as a mime. Every day is the struggle, I speak it through these lines. That's how I know they can relate, I speak their daily lives. I'm representing for my nation or the lost tribes. All my people that been locked up ain't 25 Cause being born a minority was their first crime They serve and protect, choking your neck, sever your spine They murder one of us, no guilty verdict when they try They wonder why they get no respect and we call them swine Live in a time where you lose your life and become a vine Friends turn to t-shirts, corners turn to shrines And if our leader ain't a Pharisee, then he's a scribe Cause he ain't coming out unless he thinks he can scrape a dime Get his name in the paper, face in the line The world's black and white and you better pick a side if I wasn't strong enough, then I would break inside. But I found the truth right before I lost my mind. Sorry, mama, I promised it wouldn't change me. But I would have went insane had I remained the same me. And I know you feel the same way if they slain me. So when I say the white man is the devil, don't blame me. I'm not here to make friends. Kiss baby, shake hands for politics. Yo, what's affecting all the college kids? I mean, why did the students shoot up the colleges? Newborns found the shopping bags and garbages. All these problems that nobody acknowledges. Promise you one thing, you gonna acknowledge this. Like that. What it do? What it do? What it do? You know, you know. Ah, ah. Cult leader. Cult leader. Yeah. yeah. We speak the truth, but we, we a cult leader. Cult leader. Yeah. Sip the Kool Aid, that LaFrog single barrel and Goose Got the coke going up on a Tuesday. Roast the false prophet like a gourmet souffle. Cause me no suit say, spirit gun like you skate. Nigga might run up in that black face like Gucci. Boycott a cracker, kill your favorite rapper. Cause I run with G's like a Green Bay Packer. Uh, I chop a Christian like a new machete When you polygynist, they look at you like R. Kelly Still these women want to do me like I'm Akinelli West Coast sisters love me like a Machiavelli Make these crackers lick the dust off my boots We want no cowards in our camp and we ain't taking recruits My crew the lobbies, y'all suckers is the jobbers Niggas run their lips but they dance, y'all wouldn't try us Nah, I ain't the same cat who used to break laws They just rather see me as the same cop. Some rather remain lost My brain washed with these stained thoughts I be repping for my niggas Riding for the same cause Cult leader Yeah Well, bitch, then I'm a cult leader Yeah Better ask somebody, bitch Cult leader, cult leader. Yeah we a cult leader. Yeah. Well, this is a cult leader. Yeah. Well, this is a cult leader. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mike check one, two, yeah, me. 144 back again. Uh. Uh. Run it back, run it back. Yeah. 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 Uh. 
time to leave the enemy desolate. I'm heaven sent. These niggas just on some extra shit. And I ain't impressed with it. Could you kick that bullshit to the left of it? And look, you can't deny this excellence. I use this mic like weaponry. And I've been seeking more clarity Right now I'm ready as I'll ever be Rugged as I've ever been The devil knocking at my door I'ma let him in Cause I'm a worthy adversary Pour them liqueur, laced with rosemary It's time to grind, ain't no time to tarry Take one of mine, get your soul carried I got them weary, plus these niggas full of estrogen They fickle, they false Got a big ball, so end up in the real issue Fuck with my brother and I deal with you. Yeah. Look, it's getting real official. Seeing how the bitches can cross you. And how they still twist you. It'll hit you. They pill a tissue. Them others weak. My brother's been sent to the deep. So tell me, how can I turn the other cheek while this wicked world trying to smother me? Something got in shape. I'm on pride out. Time to gird up my loins and ride out. In my soul, I feel devastation. In my eyes, I see desolation. On my door, death is waiting. But I don't want to see no more desolation. I said, I don't want to see no more. And in my soul, I feel devastation. In my eyes, I see desolation. On my door, death is waiting. But I don't want to see no more desolation. I don't want to see no more. Beat the cops, beat the ops, beat the motherfucking eyes. I'm the wall. Why you think that I've been rolling with a kind? Your little arms is too short to hot box with guy. French is long, team strong with them, but gun die would die. I Tied of these fake snakes, crooked nates who oppress Jake. No pressure makes diamonds, I got won't break on this crooked landscape. We gon' make some shape, so I ain't got time to argue with you fucking reprobates. While these crackers getting richer when we raise the crime rate, and they hunt my people like gorillas and some primates. So we in these streets trying to raise a brother's mind state in every concrete jungle from Cali to the tri state. I bury brothers over beef that they couldn't squash. Blood in the streets brings out like a loss. I trust the cracker when I mix that squash. You listening to real niggas, dog, who can't be bought. Whoa. Why you think I glow so hard? Cause this world's fucked up, nigga, I've been scarred. PTSD, brothers can't drop they guard. Every day some bullshit, you gotta weave and vibe. It's no facade, so every day I'm on my job. It's time to send these devils to the land of nigh. Cause when I lost my religion, that's when I found God. So when I lost my religion, nigga, I found God. In my soul, I feel devastation. In my eyes, I see desolation. On my door, Death is waiting, but I don't want to see no more desolation. I said, I don't want to see no more. And in my soul, I feel devastation. In my eyes, I see desolation. On my door, death is waiting, but I don't want to see no more desolation. And I don't want to see no more. I ain't a people pleaser. Huh. Yeah. I ain't a people pleaser. I don't like people either. I don't care if you're not the jigger ain't wanna meet you. Just give me my motherfucking check if we do a feature. Tell Michael Jordan he can keep his fucking sneakers. Walk inside your favorite church and just drop your preacher. Cause he ain't gonna drop the right shit that he should teach you. But what about Obama? Nigga, I don't like him either. What has he done for us? Six years or plus. All our leaders only care about in God we trust But do they trust in God? It's all a facade See through the mirage Diamonds in the cars They got million dollar houses Have you seen ours? See we get mesmerized And fail to recognize That they don't sympathize Cause now they living better lives Cause they got some money We see them as demigods But they'll be sleeping in that same place When they're semi-fives You ain't bigger than me Ain't God, ain't Christ No father figure to me you just another nigga to me. We breathe the same air. Fuck if you richer than me. Ain't never been iller than me. I got bodies on a track. You ain't no killer to me. You just another nigga to me. We both gon' die one day. You ain't no different than me. Aiming at them ass eating pastors. Three P suited up. Fuck about your status. It's gon' get you oozy up. Hang them stuff for violence while you tiptoe like a burglar. Stuff for ransom in them while they from the murderer. 
ain't gonna never consider the Pope who can't afford shit. Riding under limo tent, hiding like a road dick. Bitches think they so slick, left the people hopeless. Bullets through them decorated speeches you propose with in a case you have it noticed. Christ the race of the soldiers, honey, and 44,000 ain't bringing no roses. Fuck about two penny tastes, bitch, I'm a henny taster. And I got that thing planning in it to disintegrate them. Death to all you Jimmy Bakers for black bones. Now hold them in them black coffins. Cries take your cries. Ready to make war so you hoes just don't have to lay them down. You ain't bigger than me. Ain't God, ain't Christ, no father figure to me. You just another nigga to me. We breathe the same air, fuck if you richer than me. Ain't never been iller than me. I got bodies on the track, you ain't no killer to me. You just another nigga to me. We both gon' die one day. You ain't no different than me. You ain't no different than me. You ain't no. You ain't no. You ain't no different than me. You ain't no different than me. Ain't God, ain't Christ, no father figure to me. You ain't no different than me. You ain't no. You ain't no different than me. You ain't no different than me. We both gon' die one day. You ain't no different than me. Give me Exodus 4.22. And how in the hell did you try to take this Bible and use it for everybody? You stupid as hell. You dumb as hell. This Bible is what's going to condemn you. Because this is the book of the Israelites. You should have destroyed this book, you dumb so-called white people. Instead of going around and trying to use the Bible, the Bible is the book that's going to destroy your world, 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 world. Excuse me, everyone, I have a brief announcement to make. Jesus was black, Ronald Reagan was the devil, and the government is lying about 9-11. Thank you for your time, and good night. No! That can't be true! Shalom, Ak. Shalom, Ak. Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah Barak Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah Barak Atum. No one knows because they tried to keep it on the low from all my folks because they don't, so I'ma kill them with the flow. Blinded by the dough, we can't see clearly through the smoke. They'd rather see us on that troll. I thought they buried in a hole. They wanna see us go because they can't go toe to toe, but I can feel it in my soul. They gon' be reaping what they sow. Try to stop a glow, but they cannot achieve their goal, so I can feel it in my soul. They gon' be reaping what they sow. Hey, who shot these smalls? If we don't get them, they gon' get us all. And I'll be damned if I just sit back while my people fall. There is no contest. So when we all in this together, so let's come together now so we can end this shit forever. I don't want to go to school. I'd rather read up on my enemies yeah. and study all the methods used to kill my people mentally. Uh -huh. Sex, money, and drugs is destroying our identity. Okay. And this ain't nothing new. This shit been going on for centuries. Right. Instead of fighting for rights, we should have been fighting for our land. Now we fighting for the man. Just yeah. go right into their plan. Yeah. And I'm sick of this. It's ridiculous how the government is such hypocrites. Yeah. Let me all the way up. Turn it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mic turn check. Me up, turn me up. Turn me turn, up. Turn them down. Turn. Just turn them. Cut them off. That does, man. <laughs> yeah, I just, just want to let everybody know my new nickname is Butter. I'm not calling you that. <laughs> <laughs> my new nickname called me Butter. Y'all hear me? <laughs> check, check. Y'all know what's coming next, right? Can I Butter. be heard? Butter by car. Yeah, we can hear you, Kai. I'm not calling you that. I heard you, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I know it's coming next. We're going to have an oil called butter for men and women. The women are the ones spreading the butter. Man, the one spreading the butter. Everybody just spreading on me. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, welcome to Cross the Line Radio, man. Clap it up, y'all, man. We got captains, caught the stock. Cause all y'all caught us out. We got Quara holding it down. We got a special one for y'all tonight. Uh, we got a debate coming to y'all live in the flesh. Uh, Dr. Stacy Mobley will be Captain Katazai's opponent this evening. Before I uh get into the debate, I just want to give y'all my two cents of the day. Y'all know the man scent of the day is much. Polygamy. Right, right, 
Mm. Made by Carl Gas, sponsored by ISUPK. <laughs> <laughs> Give that a hand. You got to charge you to do something. You ain't got it right. Give that a hand. And for the ladies, it was good, good, but it was so good the sister bought it. The scent of the day for ladies is called good, good. For those ladies that got the good, good for much polygamy. <laughs> Yeah, I, he he uh, he on his marketing game. <laughs> okay, the water. So um, with that uh, last thing, I got a fifty percent off sale. Make sure you take advantage. Uh, you can go to my Etsy page if you want to see the reviews. You can go to CarGas.com if you want to order either one. The orders will ship out. Uh, we got a pay per view event coming up. I believe that should be posted. Um, did y'all bring Dr. Stacy in? Stacy in is he is he on the screen yet? He's uh, he's he's still in the back. Akadaz, did you have anything you want to say before we brought him on? Um, just you know, what I'm saying, make sure y'all know, uh, support the uh, Midwest Fire Weekend going on at the end of July. Uh, right. As Captain Nazariak said, I mean, he uh, this is definitely a month for battles. Uh, Cap got a battle going on tomorrow, Tuesday, and then the following Sunday. So, um, what we have is Thanos running the gauntlet. Yeah, so he running the gauntlet. Uh, so in between now and then, just know these are some uh, the all these debates are free of charge except for one. So make sure you support across the line radio.com. We're doing a pay per view event June hmm. 25th, Sunday. Hmm. Uh, Ashaw, whoever else is listening, if y'all could drop that link in the chat, make sure that y'all sign right, you know, right? Drop the link in the chat for across the line, and then the um, for me and Yara. This evening is on heaven and hell. You understand? So what, what we have is the Israelite lens and the Christian lens, you know what I'm saying, being headed up by uh, Dr. Stacy Mobley. Um, so j just so y'all understand the format, it's a two-minute intro. We have two 10-minute rounds and five-minute rebuttal rounds. One round is for heaven. The next round is for hell, followed by a 10-minute round a piece for a hot seat you know what i'm saying where each of us ask each other questions consecutively for 10 minutes with two minutes to answer each question all right uh dr stacy mobley is the challenger so therefore he's going to be presenting first um so you have two minutes to introduce yourself uh as well as you know what I'm saying? Your stance, what it is that you would like to prove here today. But before we do, if you want to just give yourself a brief introduction, that's fine as well. You know what I'm saying? Uh, say you could unmute whenever you're ready. Can you hear me? Hear you loud yeah, and clear. You, yep. For my intro, I'm Stacy Mobley, gospel preacher for the Church of Christ, Colorado Springs. I'm delighted to be here tonight and thank all involved for allowing me on this platform. I'm looking forward to a healthy discussion. Tonight we are going to learn. Mm. This is no game we play. I have to say I'm somewhat appalled we are debating these topics, but here we are. My course of action will be to present some sound arguments and define some key words to show and prove my proposition that hell and heaven are real places that we go when we die. Is, is this your intro intro? Yeah. Okay, so let's let's put two minutes on the clock. Okay, you. Uh, we're going to put it on the screen. And then uh, just so you know, you'll have complete uninterrupted time except for a five minute and a two minute warning, all right? Sounds good. All right, so you got two minutes. You could present now. I'm going on mute. Okay. All right, as I was saying, to I'm going to... Um, present some sound arguments and define some key words to show and prove my proposition that hell and heaven are real places that we go when we die. And I will be looking for my opponent to prove his proposition, not merely assert it. I'll be, I will be using the Bible as the inspired authoritative word of God to prove my proposition. Now, if I can, let me um, share my screen. Can I do that at this point? introduction um of course in your presentation you can do what you want but it's just two minutes so for that part you'll just be introducing yourself okay all right well um yeah thank you for the opportunity looking forward to a great discussion and uh that's all i have for now that's his introduction i'm going to give mine um 
I'm Captain Kadaz of the Israelite School of Universal and Practical Knowledge. And uh, tonight, what we're going to do is prove without a shadow of a doubt that the Christian church has taught us fallacies. You understand? Like, we, we've been taught, you understand, ra rather than, you understand, uh, uh, actually educating ourselves, we have been indoctrinated by religious dogma. You understand? And because of that, we do not understand life and death. We don't understand heaven and hell. And Christianity teaches fatalism as if every single other race on the planet gets to be able to live deliciously in a heavenly state here, except for us. We are the only race of people, blacks, Latinos and native Indians who have to turn around and die in order for us to receive anything great and wonderful from our creator. You understand? So what I'm going to prove tonight, you understand, is that heaven has context. You understand that you're going to see that heaven is where the most high dwells. The kingdom of heaven is separate from the dimension in which he resides in. You understand? There is also the kingdom of heaven that is within you. And there's also a context, which is the sky. And that hell is actually a condition on earth. Hell, hell is not a alternate dimension where a red man with a pitchfork comes and stabs you. No, that, that red man instead goes inside the church and shoots up nine parishioners in the AMC. You understand? Hell is being born inside the conditions of the ghetto. You understand from sea to shining sea inside of North, Central and South America, we are oppressed as well as all over the globe. And that oppression is a hell like condition that we are in. You understand? And that's exactly what we're going to prove today, that the Christian church has been teaching fallacies because really they're afraid of our oppressor. And some fallen angel is way easier to battle, you understand, than the man who put drugs in our ghetto. I land there. All right. So that was both introductions by both Dr. Stacy Mobley and Captain Kadazar. We are now going to go into the first round, which is, I believe, 10 minutes. Am I correct? I'm incorrect. Y yes, sir. So the first two rounds are 10, uh, 10 minutes uh, in which he presents, I present, and then we have five minute rebuttal rounds. And the first round is for heaven. Got you. And so, Dr. Stacy, what will happen is you'll probably get. Do you want a five minute and a two minute warning or do you just want to have the 10 minutes straight out? Uh, 10 minutes straight out would be great. No problem. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to have Dr. Stacy Mobley go first in his first round. Uh, he will have 10 minutes to present his uh, information. So we're going to all mute up. And then, Dr. Stacy, your time, excuse me, Dr. Stacy, your time will start when you speak. Okay, I want to share my screen, please. Okay, is my screen sharing? Okay, let me get back to it here. All right, can you see my screen and can you hear me? Your sc the screen is being shared and we can hear you. Okay, thank you. That's that's what I need to know. All right, I want to first start off, um, since we're dealing with um, heaven, I want to deal with um, uh, the kingdom, and then we'll move on uh, to heaven. Start with the scripture, Daniel chapter 2, verses 44. This is uh, Daniel in a uh, prophecy concerning uh, the kingdoms uh, for Verses 44, Nebuchadnezzar has this dream and Daniel is interpreting his dream. In Daniel 2.44, we get to this part in that dream. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. The Daniel 2.44 passage is referring to the establishment of the church. Now, it's my understanding, and they can correct me if I'm wrong, that they don't believe that the kingdom is already here. 
It is made known in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. He was the king of Babylon. He was the head of gold uh, in verse 38. And that is Babylon. Following Babylon came the second kingdom, the Medo-Persian kingdom, Daniel chapter 5, verses 28. The third was the Greek empire led by Alexander the Great. And the fourth was the Roman. You can check your history. This uh, lines up exactly with history as Daniel pro prophesied uh, and interpreted. He says, in the days of the Roman kings, God would set up a kingdom never to be destroyed. Now, this is verse 44, and this is very important because the prophecy has us to understand that the kingdom would be established in the Roman Empire, which was the fourth kingdom. This would be the time that God would set up a kingdom that would never be destroyed. Now, regarding the kingdom, there are passages where kingdom refers to heaven and others where the church is intended. And in for example, when Jesus said to Peter, uh, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And he says, and I will give you the keys to the kingdom. That's Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 and 19. Jesus is king now. While on earth, he was king potentially. Matthew 21, verse 5, John 18, 37. The kingdom during his ministry was about to appear. Jesus went about saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John the Baptist went about preaching prior to Jesus, saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In Mark chapter 9, verses 1, Jesus says that there will be some who would not taste of death till they see the kingdom come with power. Now, if the kingdom hasn't been established, then there are some old 2,000-year-old people still here because Jesus in Mark chapter 9, verse 1, says some of them would not die until they see the kingdom come with power. A new era had begun with John, Luke chapter 16, verses 16. And so the preparatory stage of the kingdom was already in existence in the Lord's ministry. Now, my whole point in all of this is to prove that the kingdom is already here. And if the kingdom is already here, then we have to understand the nature and what that kingdom is uh, actually is. And we'll show that here in a minute. People were entering it potentially by believing the message that John and then Jesus preached. So Jesus could say some were already going into the kingdom, Matthew 21, 31, and verse 32. Jesus said that some publicans and harlots believed John and were going into the kingdom. That's in the present tense, indicative mood verb. So they were going into the kingdom at the time that Jesus was on earth. So they were entering potentially by believing the gospel preached by John and being baptized, Mark chapter 1 and verse 4. They were added to the church or kingdom in Acts 2, verses 1 through 4. Now, the kingdom existed potentially, but later actually. The existence of the kingdom actually required Jesus leaving the Holy leaving and the Holy Spirit's coming. John 16, 7, Acts 2, 1, 17 and following. Notice Jesus had to leave the earth and go back to heaven following his life, death, burial, resurrection, and ascension in order to be crowned King of kings and Lord of lords. He had to sit down on David's spiritual throne, 2 Samuel 7, Acts 2, verse 30 and following. Remember, Jesus left the earth to receive a kingdom, Luke chapter 19, verses 12 through 15. Now, notice this syllogism. And I know we don't hardly have time, but if he can somehow fit this in in his rebuttal to rebuke this uh, syllogism, that would be great. It's a hypothetical syllogism. It says this, if the kingdom came with power and if the church and if the power came with the Holy Spirit and if the Holy Spirit came on Pentecost of Acts 2, then the kingdom came on Pentecost of Acts 2. Now, this is where we prove that. Number one, the kingdom came with power. Mark chapter nine, verses one. Number two, the power came with the Holy Spirit. Luke 24, 49, Acts chapter one and verses eight. The Holy Spirit came on Pentecost of Acts chapter 2, Acts 2, 1 through 4. Then the kingdom came on Pentecost of Acts chapter 2. So the kingdom, my friends, is already here. Now let's look at some passages affirming that the kingdom is already here. In John chapter 3, verses 3 through 
5, it reads, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So Jesus in this passage gives the entry into the kingdom and the conditions to be met are water and spirit. Well, we see water and spirit come into fruition when on the first Pentecost after the resurrection of Christ in Acts chapter two, when the first gospel sermon was preached by Peter. The Bible informs us that as Peter concludes his sermon, they ask the question, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thus fulfilling the requirements and the conditions that Jesus set before Nicodemus and all, being born of water and spirit, the entry into the kingdom began in Acts chapter 2. Colossians chapter 1, verses 13, we read, Who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. That's present tense, my friends. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 28, Wherefore we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. And Revelation chapter 1, in verse 9, John, on that lonely Isle of Patmos, he, he writes, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and notice and in the kingdom. The kingdom wasn't isn't yet something yet future. The kingdom was it was already established. It was established on Pentecost. John said he was in it. He says, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the Isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, my point in all this is to prove that the kingdom is not something yet future. The kingdom is already here. The kingdom was in the preparatory state, beginning with John and beginning with Jesus. It really was in a preparatory state with the prophets who had prophesied. It. I don't have time to really get into that. But John and Jesus came preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And the Bible informs us that the kingdom came on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. And as I just read, Colossians chapter 1, Hebrews 12, Revelations 1, John 3, the kingdom is already here. Now let's look at some specific passages concerning heaven. Now, I don't know, um, and I'm, I, I want to be kind here, I just... I'm not understanding, and, and maybe my opponent can help me understand, that the Bible teaches in plain passages that heaven is a destination. It's a place uh, that we go to when we die if we were obedient to God. Let's read some passages. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 22, Jesus said, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth, and I notice, this, notice the contrast, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures where in heaven. Is that 10 minutes? Yeah. That's why I asked if you wanted a warning. Because uh, sometimes that No warning, problem. No problem. I can. Yeah. Uh, sometimes the warning does help, you know, because it'll let you know if you got to speed okay, up. Okay. No, no, no problem. No problem. I, I can get back to, I'll get back to these at another time. Definitely. You have another round. Do you want the warning going forward or do you still want to just 10 straight? Uh, 10 straight. I'll just pay attention because I don't like my concentration broken. I, listen, I could relate to that. That's not a problem. All right. All right. So with that, that was Dr. Stacy Mobley's uh, first round on the subject of heaven. We're going to now go into Captain Katazai's first round. He will, excuse me, he will have 10 minutes. Captain Katazai, are you ready? I'm going to go. All right. No sweat. So your time will start. Once you begin speaking, everybody else will be muted. Do you want a two-minute warning, or are you good with the 10 minutes straight? Uh, I'll take the warning. All right, so you want the two-minute warning? All right, so we're one. You had the two-minute warning? No, just two. 
So we're warning you at the two-minute warning mark. The time starts once you begin to speak. All right, we're going to get straight to it. Um, I, I think, once again, this is the major problem. Christians don't understand context. Apparently, Christians believe that uh, living under captivity in the continuation of the Roman Empire is the established kingdom of heaven. You understand, which is why I said that there's multiple context when it comes down to what heaven is. We do know that the kingdom of heaven is going to be where on earth. Matthew 6 and 10 says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Meaning what? There's the kingdom is going to be on earth. You understand, we don't die and go up to heaven and get halos and, you know, play the harp with grandma that we miss so dearly. No, that's not how things work. You understand? But this is what we do know. We do know that, which um, I'll save that for the rebuttal. This is what we do know. It's going to be here on earth. In Revelations 5 and 10, it says, And hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Anybody see the nation of Israel reigning right now? Has Christ returned right now? Where are all these kings and priests that are reigning on the earth right now if the kingdom of heaven is fully established? I mean, I don't I don't see it anywhere. Do you? But this is what we do know. We know that this kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. You understand? He has made us our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth. Well, is this anywhere else? Let's see, because the Bible seems to be pretty congruent. So if we go to Revelations 2, we're just backing up a couple of chapters, right? And we see Revelations 2 and 25. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. What were we given? We were given an opportunity to receive the kingdom. You understand? But that which ye have already, what is it that we have already? truth the truth is what we have already and we have to hold on to that if we want to be a part of the kingdom that christ is going to establish and that it's like and he that overcometh and keepeth my works on to the end is the end here yet i don't think so to him will i give power over the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I am received of my father. Here we start to see that an end has to come for there to be a new beginning. And once that comes, there's a changing of the guard. And now we are going to be in rulership. Who is we? The Israelites, blacks, Latinos, and native Indians. Now, if we go to Revelations 21 and 2, and I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem. Any of y'all ever see this before? Coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Well, when did this happen? Because this chapter is actually prophecy that goes all the way back to Isaiah, and it's still prophesying that this is something that's going to come, something that hasn't been established yet. So what I'm going to first read is inside of Revelations. Then I'm going to jump to the prophecy inside of inside of Isaiah. So now when we come on down to around verse, I'll start at 23. And the city had no need of sun, neither of the moon to shine for it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it, and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. Well, where was this before? This was inside Isaiah, the 60th chapter. This is always, and this is what always blows my mind, whenever they turn around and say, um, you know what I'm saying? That was uh, Revelations 21, by the way, and I, was, I started in verse 2, and I was reading 24 to 25. Um, so now, right now, we're in Isaiah, the 60th chapter. I'm going to start at verse one. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. Everyone always wants to talk about Israel being a light onto the Gentiles. Well, here's the light that's onto the Gentiles. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Why? Because right now, the Lord is shining on Israel. Before Israel was in darkness. Why? Israel needed to be redeemed. Israel was being destroyed. 
Israel was in captivity. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and the gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Sound familiar? And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and the kings to thy brightness and thy rising. Now what's going to happen here? And the sons of the strangers shall build up thy walls. When you read about the walls inside that same chapter 21, I don't have time. You see that on the gates, on the walls was written the nation of of Israel. And remember, salvation is written on those gates because salvation's also for Israel. Just a little jab, but we're going to continue. You understand? So now, and the sons of the strangers shall build up thy walls, and their king shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in favor I've had, in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Why is, what is this favor? That's the light that shines on them. It's the redemption of Israel, that now they are no longer in darkness and in a low condition. They are being raised into a high condition. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. Sound familiar? They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles and that their kings may be brought. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven is on earth it is something that has not fully been established and it's something you have to earn that's why it's he who endures to the end we're in the last days that's where we're at right now now i'm going to drop that for time's sake and i'm going to go to luke the 17th chapter you understand this is what christians you understand so butcher and they just don't understand because they would rather not rule like the scripture says we're going to with rods of vines they would rather just serve the other nations and our oppressor you understand so now this is luke 17 and 20 and when he was demanded of the pharisees when the kingdom of god should come he answered them and said the kingdom of heaven cometh not with observation meaning what you have to establish that kingdom where first inside of you neither shall they say low here nor low there for behold the kingdom of god is within you why because you get to the kingdom when you put this truth inside of you which is why he that has and overcomes to the end the same shall get that reward we spoke of inside revelations but this is what christians do christians read passages like revelations the fourth chapter where it says, and after I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. This heaven that we're talking about is this is a vision of what it looks like inside of the dimension. You understand where the Lord dwells and one West. We have a uh, we have a culture here in which you understand our slang. We call it the fourth dimension, which is where the Lord and the angels dwell. You understand? So now. It says, and the door was opened in heaven and the first voice, which I heard it was up. It's like, yeah, I heard. As it were a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And I immediately was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne. So we know that there is, you understand, heaven as far as where the Lord dwells. But this is what we also know. You understand? We don't go up there and just chill. Like I said, with the little like see the Catholic Church and the Christians want you to be up there with little naked baby angels. I see the two minutes. You understand? They, they want they want you to be up there with grandma and all that. That's not how this thing works. We're going king. The kingdom of heaven is rulership of the planet Earth. And if it's also not talking about you understand rulership, then it's just talking about the sky. When God created the heavens and the earth, it was talking about the sky and the earth, the water, all things that were inside of creation. You understand? So there is context. You have heaven, that is the sky and space. You have heaven, which is the dimension where the most high and the angels dwell. And then you have the kingdom of heaven that is within us that we have to establish. You understand? By serving Christ until he returns at the end to establish his kingdom in which we will get rulership over the planet Earth. Once his will is done on Earth as it is in heaven. Then we shall reign on earth and then we shall reign with Christ for a thousand years. You understand? But y'all haven't seen Babylon fall yet, have you? I, I haven't seen everything come to pass in Revelations. I mean, unless my opponent is a predatorist, you understand? Somebody who believes everything in the Bible has already been fulfilled. I want to know where the trumpet's at. 
I, I want to know where the last sound of the trumpet's at. Where's the 200, you understand, thousand, thousand angels that cracked that sky? And then when did the merchants watch Babylon, you understand, the whore that sits on many waters, burn off in the distance? We ain't see it yet. And with that, I yield the rest of my time. All right. We appreciate that. That completes the first round of this debate. Again. So now it's uh, two five-minute rebuttals for, for, uh, for heaven. Yeah. Uh, thank you, um, moderator. <laughs> so I, thought I, was, I thought I was a moderator. Um, now we will have the rebuttal round. Um, again, this is from the first round. So Dr. Stacy, excuse me, Dr. Stacy, are you ready for your rebuttal round? Yes, sir. I'm ready. Okay, so this round, of course, is a rebuttal. It will only be five minutes, 300 seconds. Um, if you're ready, your time will start once you begin. All right, I'm ready to go. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to respond as, as quick as I can because um, the time just flies by. He mentioned about us being in captivity. That's the problem with uh, this group. They live in the past. And uh, the Bible teaches liberty and freedom in Christ Jesus. We are in no captivity. We are free in Christ. He quoted Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10 and, and saying that thy kingdom come. What he doesn't understand is that when that prayer was uttered, the kingdom had not yet been established. That's why Jesus said to the disciples to pray, thy kingdom come. The kingdom has come. The kingdom is here. And there's no need for that prayer to be uttered. Revelations chapter five and verse 10, the rain, what he doesn't, un he doesn't understand the context of the book of Revelation, first of all. And I say that kindly. Christians are the ones who are reigning right now. We are reigning right now. You understand the context of the book? You would understand that it's Christians who are reigning in Revelation chapter five, verses 10. In Revelation chapter two, he went to Revelation chapter two and verse 25. And what he should have done is go to the beginning of the chapter where the chapter is discussing the seven churches of Asia Minor. These are the seven churches of, of, of uh, seven churches of Asia Minor, the churches of Christ. This has nothing to do with physical, literal Israel. Read the context, my friend, and you'll see that Jesus is giving condemnations and commendations to those seven congregations of the Lord's people in Asia Minor. In Revelation chapter 21, he doesn't understand that this is the church in the context of heaven and what it's going to be like and how it's going to be in Revelation uh, in the time to come. He goes to Isaiah chapter 60, a prophecy concerning the Gentiles. It's all about Gentile inclusion, the Gentiles inclusion with Israel that came to fruition on in, in Acts chapter 10 when the Gentiles, the first full blooded Gentiles entered the church. Luke chapter 17 and verses 20, he uh, talks about the kingdom. The kingdom does not come with uh, observation. The kingdom with is within you. That's is absolutely right. He just doesn't understand what that means. There would be no empirical evidence when the kingdom would come. And Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit came, as I had quoted those scriptures earlier, that's when the power came. That's when the kingdom came. Kingdom didn't come with uh, empirical verification, but the kingdom did indeed come. He doesn't understand Luke 17 and 20. He says, we're not going to go to heaven and chill. Well, who says we're going to go to heaven and chill? Well, nobody teaches that we're going to go to heaven and chill. The Bible says we're going to be servants. We're going to serve. We're going to serve God. We're going to we're going to be servants. Uh, it's going to be heaven is going to be full of activity. We don't know all that's entailed. But nobody's saying, nobody teaches, not that I know of, I surely don't, that we're going to go to some heaven and chill. And if grandma made it, we will be with grandma. If grandpa made it, we'll be with him too. Whoever makes it, that's who we'll be with. But there's going to be activity, meaningful activity in hell and in, in heaven, not just going there and chill. I don't espouse that doctrine. He says, uh, talks about the relationship to the, to, of the planet Earth. You understand what uh, Peter says about the earth oh, over in, in Second Peter when he, he tells us that uh, the earth is going to be destroyed, destroyed. The earths and the works therein will go, are going to be burned up and there's going to be a, a, a new heaven and earth. And when you understand the four instances of new heaven and earth, two in Isaiah, one in the book uh, in Peter and one in Revelation, it's a summation of heaven itself. And so when he 
uh, talks about rulership on the earth and a thousand year reign, that's nonsense. We're not going to be living on no physical earth. Show me the passage of scripture. Give me the passage of scripture that teaches that. The Bible says when Jesus comes back, those the dead in Christ will rise first. They'll meet the Lord in the air. And those who are alive, will they then will rise and be in the air with the Lord. And we shall forever be with the Lord in, the, in heaven, not on earth, my friend. All right. Now, he is correct about the atmospheres of heaven. I, I, I agree with that. And you have uh, where the birds fly. That's called the heaven in the in scriptures. Where the moon and the stars are, that's considered uh, heavens. Uh, but the third heaven, that's where Paul went in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And he calls that paradise. He calls that paradise. All right. And so, all right, finally, Babylon was wrong. He does not understand. Oh, my goodness. All right. All right. That is your five minute rebuttal. I, I tried. I offered you a warning. You, you, um, it's okay. You do. You're doing great. I appreciate it. You're doing no great. Problem. Yeah. No, because I heard you say, "Oh man, I know how I feel to lose that time." You know what That's I'm saying? Okay. So, That's okay. Yeah. I appreciate. I appreciate the time. No, no problem. Nope. No problem at all. Uh, we appreciate it. So now we're going to turn to Captain Katazai on this subject. Katazai, you ready with your five minute rebuttal? I'm. I'm ready. No sweat. So next will be Captain Kadazai. Kadazai, you'll now have the floor. We'll all be muted. The floor is yours. When you, that, excuse me. Your time will start when you begin to speak. Doc, I'm sorry I got to do you so dirty like this. First of all, I, I quoted three scriptures that showed you it's going to be on earth. I quoted Matthew 6 and 10 on earth as it is in heaven. Revelations 5 and 10 as a uh, slagia and hast made us unto our God, kings and priests. We shall reign on the earth. Two. Three went even to Revelations and to Isaiah. And here's what's amazing. You know what I'm saying? Isaiah is talking about Gentile inclusion. You understand? Here's the Gentile inclusion that you got. And the sons of the stranger shall build up thy wall, servitude, and their king shall minister unto thee, servitude. For my wrath I smote thee, but in favor have I had mercy on thee. Oh, yeah, I want to include some Gentiles, too, because it ain't heaven if we build in the walls. It ain't heaven if we got to do the work. No, it's heaven, you understand, when the same white folks who chanted build the walls for, for Mexicans are building the walls for a Mexican to keep their white ass out. That's what's going to happen. You understand? For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. We all for Gentile inclusion over here, my man. But let's go back to what else you said, right? You said that the Christians were reigning. Well, here's the problem with that. When I read 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Brother, the, the Christian church is the most unrighteous place on the face of the earth. The Christian church is the house of Satan, man. Be not deceived. Why? Don't be deceived by these pastors who just want to talk about love and let's all join hands together. Neither fornicators. There's more fornication going on inside that church than a little bit. You understand? You got twerk contests going on in the churches right now. They're giving out uh, 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 calendars now with women dressing half naked out the church to try to keep some men in there because brothers are leaving because of how effeminate it is is inside that church nor idolaters you understand the christmas tree easter eggs you understand the the, the damn the, the cross itself white jesus worship of mary all these denominations do damn near all these things nor adulterers i didn't seen a video where a christian pastor done shot a man coming inside the church who was confronting him about sleeping with his wife he wanted to kill him to kill to, to hide the evidence nor effeminate oh there's that word again you understand when every man inside the Christian church is effeminate, nor abuses of themselves with mankind. You come over to Connecticut. That was the first church in the country to put a pride flag on the church. Got involved in Pride Month. It's June right now in Pride Month. You got uh, T.D. Jakes turning around. That's why Romans, the first chapter said, who turned the truth of God into a lie? The church did. The church did that. You want to say that it was the church that was doing that? Well, this is what I know. The 144,000 is the ones that's going to reign with Christ. That's 12,000 from every tribe. When you read Revelation 7, you understand, it turns around and says, and the number of them that was sealed, this is Revelation 7 and 4, were 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. The problem is y'all want to be a part of some rainbow coalition in the church. You want to, you, there's, there's Asian churches, 
friggin' churches. And that's another thing. Christianity turn around and act like it's for everybody. Why are all the churches segregated? Why are all the Asians go to church together? Predominantly white churches, predominantly black churches, because the whole Christian church is full of shit. That's the problem. But when I read about who's actually going to rule, it's 12,000 from Judah, 12,000 from Asher, 12,000 from Reuben, 12,000 from Gad. If it was the Christian church, you mean to tell me there's billions of Christians on the earth right now? Y'all ain't got 144,000 yet? No. Let me tell you what really happens. And this is what really happens. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's why y'all ain't brought Christ back. You understand? Y'all, y'all ain't y'all ain't brought Christ back for his second coming, for his return, because really you failed Christ in trying to serve him. Because really y'all fell for the lies. Really, y'all fell for the okie doke. Really, y'all have been bamboozled by false prophets, and now you regurgitate nothing but false doctrine. Unrighteousness shall not, you understand, inherit the kingdom of God. And when you turn around my last scripture, John 19 and 15, but they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. You want to be under the Roman Empire. That's the problem. That's why you turned around and said, This was Rome. Kingdom of heaven's been here because really you serve Rome. We serve Christ and we wait patiently. You understand with the patience of the saints for our king to return and burn down Babylon and Babylon's fallen. I don't know if you've seen the pictures of New York looking like apocalypto. You understand me? I yield my time. Righty, all righty, all righty. That concludes, I believe, the first round of the heaven side of Kevin Kadazai versus Dr. Stacy Mobley. Heaven and hell debate. Make sure if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to Across the Line Radio. Make sure you subscribe to Captain Desire in the Lab podcast. If you're checking it out on the other side, I got a 50% off sale off the flyers, body butters, and oars. Men scent of the day is much polygamy. Just a little brief interlude. Dr. Stacey, are you ready for your second round? Which will also be 10 minutes. Are you ready for your second round? Where's Dr. Stacy? I can't hear him. Michelle. You got to unmute, Doc. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. We got another 10 minute round on heaven. No, no, no. On, oh, if I said heaven, I apologize. I meant uh, uh, hell, the second part. That's why I was talking about the second part. Oh, round. okay. Yeah, if yeah, I yeah. If I use the word yeah, heaven, yeah. I apologize for that. My bad. I apologize. Okay. That, that's that's what I was wondering. But through you all, he ain't want to unmute till you get that clear. I, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> no, no sweat, brother. All right. So now we're going to get the second round. Uh, Dr. Stacy will have 10 minutes. This subject will be on hell. So, Dr. Stacy, are you ready? I'm going to share my screen first, okay? Okay. De definitely. We want to get your screen shared before any of your time goes. Make sure you get all 10 minutes of this joint. All right. I'm going to. All right. Can you see the screen? Yeah. We all definitely right. I'm ready. It says hell and hypothetical. Yep. There you go. All right. So the, your time will start when you begin speaking. The floor is yours. All right, I'm going to begin, first of all, dealing with hell and some hypothetical syllogisms. These are arguments uh, put in valid form. They're sound. And my opponent has to deal with these because um, uh, you just can't uh, observe the Passover when it comes to these syllogisms. Number one, if Jesus taught that hell is a literal place for the disobedient to which they will go after death and not merely a state or condition in which they find themselves on earth, then the biblical doctrine of hell teaches that it is a place for the disobedient after death. Jesus taught that hell is a literal place for the disobedient to which they will go after death and not merely a state or condition in which they find themselves on earth. Then the biblical doctrine of hell teaches that it is a place for diso the disobedient after death. Syllogism number two, if a man in order to experience punishment must be in a place in order to experience that punishment, then man's eternal punishment has to exist in some place. Man, in order to experience punishment, must be in a place in order to experience that punishment. Then man's eternal punishment has to exist in some place. If a lost sinner will be punished in eternity following his spiritual death, and if he will be in a spiritual body following his physical death, and if that body has to exist in some place in eternity to exist at all, then a lost sinner will be punished in a place. A lost sinner will be punished in eternity. Matthew 25, 46, 
Revelations 20, 11 through 15. And he will be in a spiritual body following the, his physical death. Genesis 3, 19, Matthew 10, 28. And that body has to exist in eternity in some place to exist at all. Then a lost sinner will be punished in a place. If all sinners will be punished eternally in one place, then that place can be named and or described. All sinners will be punished eternally in one place. Revelations 20, 11 through 15. Then that place can be named and or, des or described. Now let me stop that one and go on to uh, my next one. All right, let's see. How do I get back and share screen? Let's see, my time is just going fast. Oh, boy. Let's do this. Okay, here we go. The word translated hell in English is the Greek word Gehenna. Gehenna is used 12 times in the New Testament, and Jesus used the term 11 of those times. Jesus did. Let me give you a little background from Gehenna. It's derived from the Valley of Hinnom, also the Valley of the Sons of Hinnom, just outside of Jerusalem. It is first mentioned in Nehemiah 11.30. Its history includes use as a place where idolatrous Jews burned their children in homage to the pagan god Molech, 2 Chronicles 28, 3, 33 and 6, Josiah, the righteous restorer of Judah, caused the practice to cease, and the valley thenceforth became a place of abomination and abhorrence. As early as the 2nd century BC, uninspired Jewish literature used Gehenna as a figure to refer to final eternal punishment of sinners. The Son of God applied this word in this very same way, using the name of the literal valley of abomination and abhorrence to refer to the place of ultimate abomination and abhorrence beyond Jerusalem. Now, what did Jesus say? Matthew 5, 22, but I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. And whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire, Gehenna. Matthew chapter 5, verses 29 through 30. And if thou right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for, profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that the whole body should be cast into hell, Gehenna. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell, Gehenna. Matthew chapter 10, verses 28. This is Jesus. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. Gehenna. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 9. And if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Gehenna. Matthew 23, 15, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you can pass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, you make him twofold, more the child of hell than yourselves, Gehenna. Matthew 23, 33, fill ye up the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell, Gehenna. Mark 9, 43, and if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life main than having two hands to go into hell, Gehenna, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Mark 9 and chapter 45, and if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, Gehenna, into the fire, into the fire that shall never be quenched. Mark 9 and 47, if thy hand offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell, the hell fire. And uh, Luke 12, 5, but I will forewarn you whom you shall fear, fear him, which after he have killed, have power to cast into hell. Yeah, I say unto you, fear him. That's uh, Gehenna. Let me drop down. Well, James 3, 6, I got a few minutes. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defiled the whole body and set it on fire, the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell, Gehenna. If a person denies the biblical doctrine of hell, he, she denies the very Jesus that taught it. Let me say that again. If you deny the biblical doctrine of hell, my friend, you deny the very Jesus that taught it. Matthew chapter 10, verses 28, and the word destroy. The Greek word is from apolumai, which means to be delivered up to eternal misery. The idea of being destroyed in hell is that one will suffer utter irreclaimable loss and that forever. Luke chapter 12 and verse 5 in the word cast. It's not a state 
of being is a place. The Greek word is embalo, which means to cast into or to throw in. This proves that hell is not a state or condition that one experiences while on earth. It is a literal place where the soul of all disobedient spirits will spend eternity, a place and not a state. Jesus referred to hell as a place of eternal punishment, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 46. Jesus described hell as a place of separation from God, Christ, and the redeemed and banishment from heaven. Matthew 5, 29, Matthew 7, 23, Matthew 25, 41. Jesus taught hell is a place where one will be with Satan and all of the evil men and women of all time. While the fire of hell was prepared for the devil and his angels, the lost will at judgment be consigned to the same place. Matthew 25, 41. Jesus taught that hell is everlasting, eternal, and forever. See Matthew chapter 25, 46. He taught the fire of hell is unquenchable. Fire, Matthew 3, 12, Mark 9, 43 and 48. The hell fire of Matthew 18, 9 is referred to as eternal fire in verse 8. And the devil that deceiveth them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were open and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Now watch this. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Let me read this real quickly. I think I got a minute or so. Uh, Brahm sums it up succinctly. Does any question as to whether or not Jesus declared the eternal punishment of the wicked? All the authority of the almighty God is present in the works he spoke about hell. Jesus had more to say about hell than any other speaker or writer in the Bible. If he was mistaken in what he said, then the almighty, eternal, and everlasting God was mistaken. And that is not the case. Indeed, if it comes to a disagreement, let God be true. And every man a liar. What more could Jesus have said? There is absolutely no way the clear impact of his words can be brushed aside and the assertion made that there is no eternal doom for the ungodly, unless, of course, we join the critics who arbitrarily determine that Jesus didn't really say these things at all. Those who maintain Jesus did not utter these severe sayings about hell are like gamblers playing a game they will surely lose. Jesus, the one who is coming again to judge the living and the dead, expressed himself clearly and without room for doubt about it. The rest of the New Testament writers follow his lead to the letter. Retribution for the ungodly is eternal and without end. Hell is real, my friends, and we need to get real with it. I yield my time. Oh, uh, Kadazai, you ready? Hey, Kadazai, before you go, I think General wanted to say something. For, did you want to say yeah, that? Yeah, I could. Speaking of, of hell, let me tell you, you sisters out there that want somebody that want to have that tail catch hell. Some of you sisters out there, speaking of hell, shout out to Dr. Stacy with all of his hell. Some of you sisters out here, that tail of yours needs to catch hell. That tail needs to catch hell. That tail has been in peace for too long. That tail gets no trouble. That tail needs to catch hell. Captain Desire has made another sin mm, <laughs> called much polygamy. Mm, what does it smell like? Mm, smells like polygamy. Mm, good gracious. Talk about catching hell. Dr. Steven, let me call you back in one more second now. Give me a few more minutes, all right? Listen, speaking about Dr. Steven, you want... Stacy, listen, you sisters out there, you want to catch, you want that tail of yours to catch hell. You should give your husband some of this here, Much Polygamy by Carl Gast. Mm. Give him a hand, Captain Desire Yuck. He got some other oils here too that smell good, huh? What you dealing with here? Trust her. This is the woman's one. This smells delicious. Sprung, you sisters. Speaking of hell. If <laughs> she's much put yes. much polygamy, some of you sisters out here, that tail needs to catch hell. 
we trying to help you out here in the UPK. Uh, hell everlasting. You that that tail of yours is going to be an everlasting hell. Meaning what? Meaning what? Let me explain it to Dr. Stephen. Stacy. Stacy, imagine someone tying fire to your wife's tail or, or your significant other, whatever you have, to her tail, tying fire to it. Now, of course, what would the sister do? She'd be smacking it, trying to put it out because it's hot. It's hot. Uh, <laughs> Brock, I why I was shy. But you can't. It's tied to you, Asher. So you can run and jump and run and flip out of the bed. But someone has tied fire to that tail. Hellfire, Dr. Steve. <laughs> Steven, Stacy, hellfire, Doctor Steven. I just wanted to stay, Stacy. I just wanted to talk about this new oil from uh, Carl Gas called Much Polygamy. You brothers out there, you want to satisfy a woman? You want to make sure a woman knows that she has been with a man? Tie fire to that tail with Carl Gas. Much polygamy. Clap it. All right, we that was a brief commercial interlude. I was about to say, now we're back after that brief commercial break. Back after that, hey, I'm the moderator, kind of. Oh, so like it. Just a brief, brief commercial. All right, so we're gonna get to this, uh, Captain Kadazai. You are now gonna begin your second round on the subject of hell. You will now have 10 minutes, uh, to prove your case on what you believe hell is. Um, are you prepared for your round? Ready to go. No sweat. Your time will start once you begin speaking. Everybody else's mic will be muted. You got the floor. Go on. Okay, okay. All right. So we're going to start straight with Second uh, Peter's 1 and 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. What the Christian church believes about hell really comes from the Greeks. You understand? It's a mixture of, of the Greeks with Dante's Inferno. You understand? With them just trying to scare rich people and making sure that, you understand, they paid their tithes to the church and whatnot. That's that's a brief synopsis of it. We don't follow cunningly devised fables. We understand universal and practical knowledge here. When we make known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Here's what we do know, right? Christ did talk about hell. Let's talk about hell. Matthews 10 and 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are unable to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Wait, what happened here? See, see, this is what the Christians teach. The Christians teach that you die. And when you die, your soul leaves your body. Your body goes in the earth. And now your soul goes where? To hell. How is the Lord destroying your soul and body in hell? Well, let's find a couple of examples. How about Jonah? You understand? Jonah 2 and 2 says, And I cried by reason of mine affliction. You know what it means to be afflicted? Unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell cried I. And thou heardest my voice. See here, we see a primary example of what Christ was talking about. We see Jonah, you understand, body and soul in the same place that is hell by reason of affliction. Well, where was Jonah? Anybody know? Says that he was inside of a fish's belly. Jonah 2 and 1. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish's belly. He didn't die. It tells you his exact location. Inside the belly of a fish and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell cried I and thou heardest my voice. Why? Because Jonah was in hell. I thought you had to die to go to hell. I thought that hell was not a condition that was on earth. What, what happened? I'm All I'm doing is just reading the Bible. This is Psalm 16 and 10. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. You understand, like when you read all throughout Psalms, you start to see David talk about hell. David didn't die. You understand? Where was his soul that it wasn't left in hell? David was on the run being hunted, you understand, by the king of Israel at that time. David was sleeping inside caves, didn't know where he would get his meal from. You understand, hell is a condition on 
earth that we see David was not left in because all of this was while he was alive. You understand? Just like Jonah was alive, experiencing affliction in hell. Let's see if there's any more examples of this. Psalms 86 and 13. It says, for great is thy mercy towards me. This is David speaking about how merciful the Lord was unto him. And now has delivered my soul from the lowest hell. Now, what we read a minute ago is that you should fear the Lord who can put your body and soul in hell. Well, here we see that David's body and soul was in hell. Where? On earth. And the Lord had mercy on him and made him the king of Israel, delivered him from his enemies. You understand? Made his enemies his footstool. Let's read that again. Maybe you didn't hear it the first time. I don't know. Psalms 86 and 13. You're talking about the things I got to address. You need to address this. For great is thy mercy towards me, David, the Lord, having mercy on him. And now has delivered my soul from the lowest hell. Now, there's a very good reason as to why I went here to talk about the lowest hell. Well, where else? You would want to talk about fire, Gehenna, Gehenna, Gehenna. The problem is Greek has warped your minds. You understand when you need to realize that this is a Hebrew people. So if you want to understand the context of what hellfire is, you need to understand it from the Hebrew. Well, what was written in Hebrew, the Old Testament? Let's not throw away the Old Testament. See, Christians think half the book is done away with half your brain is done away with. That's the problem. You understand? So let's read. This is Deuteronomy 32. I'm going to start at verse 21. They have moved me to jealousy. With that which is not God, they have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those that are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. For a fire is kindled in mine anger. This is what you don't understand because you're too busy stuck in the Greek. Fire is synonymous with the Lord's anger, wrath, and judgment, his punishment that will consume you and shall burn onto the lowest hell. Well, David just said his soul was delivered from the lowest hell. Where was David? What dimension was David in? You understand? When I read the Bible, I read about David being in Hebron. I read about David being in Jerusalem. I read about David traveling all over the Middle East where he had mercy shown to him out of the lowest hell. Because the Lord destroys your body and your soul in the lowest hell that is where on earth no, the scripture can't say that. Let's read it again. Deuteronomy 32 and 22. For a fire is kindled in mine anger. You want Gehenna? Gehenna right here now. You understand? Gehenna is the fire that is, you understand, the Lord's anger. And shall burn onto the lowest hell. And shall consume the earth with her increase. And set on fire the foundation of the mountains. You understand? This ain't this ain't this ain't talking about Ontario and Quebec. You understand? This is talking about the Lord's judgment. I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will spend mine arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger. You want Gehenna? You want the fire? You want the Lord's anger? What are they being burnt with? Hunger and devoured with burning heat. And with bitter destruction, I will also send the teeth of beast upon them and the poisons of serpents out the dust. Because all this is happening on earth. Everything that we just read happened where? On earth. But the problem is, you, you, you know what the problem is? Some of y'all get your doctorate degree and you forget what hell is. You understand? Y'all forget what it is to, to eat noodles. Y'all forget what it is to heat your house with the oven door open. You understand? Because y'all live good. So it don't matter now. So we can serve the white man, right? That's not how things work around here. You understand? We live in a real world. So now when you turn around and we continue to read inside the scriptures, you said that there was you not. Know I'm going to save that for the rebuttal. I won't even go there. Let's go to Isaiah 5 and 12. Isaiah 5 and 12 says, and the harp and the vial, the labyrinth, the pipe, the wine are in their feast. But they regard not the works of the Lord, neither consider the operation of his hands. Let's let's find out about some of the Lord's operation, shall we? Therefore, my people are gone into captivity. Captivity is hell. 
because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Why? Why are they famished? Do you understand? What is this dried up with? Because that's the heat of the Lord. That's the fire of his anger that he burns his people with. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself. Why? Because now hell has increased what this condition of affliction being put on God's people from his anger when they disobey him. So now it says, therefore, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp. And he that rejoice shall descend into it. Why? Because you go from a high condition to a low condition. You go from a high estate to captivity, to hunger, to famine. You understand? To oppression. Yeah, I don't understand this, though. You understand? It seems to just skip over you. But now, this is verse 15. And the man that shall be brought down and the mighty man shall be humbled and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. But the Lord of all hosts shall be exalted in judgments because this is talking about somebody rising up, somebody being brought down. How is the Lord exalted in his judgment? Why? And that God is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness because it's right for the Lord to punish us. And where does the Lord punish us? He punishes us right here on earth, just like he did to Jonah when Jonah ain't want to go to Nineveh. He punished him with the affliction of the belly of hell. You understand? Just like he delivered David from the lowest hell because the Lord's anger is a fire that is kindled that burns to the lowest hell, which consumes the earth. I'll yield the rest of my time. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, that concludes the second round of the debate on the subject of hell. We're going to now go to Dr. Stacy's five-minute rebuttal. Dr. Stacy, we now have five minutes to rebuttal the things that you heard, Captain Cotter, as I say. Um, are you there, brother? You got to unmute? I'm here. I'm here. Do you need to share your screen? Uh, no, no, I'm good. Okay, so if you don't need to share your screen and if you're there, your time will start when you begin speaking. Everybody else will be muted. Your, the floor is yours. You got it. You don't have to do that. All right. Now, so. this is supposed to be a uh, intellectual discussion on these concepts, on these doctrines. And what I'm seeing and hearing is emotionalism. Now, to rebuke, to uh, set forth the proposition, you need to give an argument. You haven't done that uh, either on heaven or hell, but you spoke with a lot of energy. You spoke with a lot of uh, emotion. And I can refute everything you just said simply from the standpoint of the scriptures that you were using has to do with those who were alive and, yes, being punished. I have no problem with the fact that God punished his people. God still disciplines his people today. Hebrews chapter 12, whom the Lord loves, he chases. That doesn't mean that's a hell. Now, you can use the expression all you want, but the Bible doesn't do that. Now, that's the doctrine of Second uh, Captain Choctazah. Uh, verse whatever. That's, it's made up stuff. The Bible plainly and clearly says, now you can make fun of Gehenna all you want, but scholarship recognizes that's the word of the realm where the disobedient spirits go. Now you got to deal with that. You can't just, just you know, be talking in your emotions and saying things that just, just doesn't make sense. You have to deal with the things that are being taught in the Bible. Now, you can't rewrite scripture. You just can't do it. Now, you can want something to be the case, but that doesn't mean that it is the case. What's the case is, what does the Bible teach? What does the Bible say? Now, all you did in your presentation of hell was you didn't like what I said. <laughs> you have your chance to review it, uh, but you didn't like what I said. And you simply rewrote scripture concerning 
what you believe that hell is, is a condition. And that's why God did punish his people because they were disobedient. When, when uh, David, um, you, you quoted, you quoted uh, uh, Psalm 16 and you applied it to David and you misapplied that scripture. That scripture is applied to Christ. Peter quotes that in Acts chapter 2. And uh, he references Christ. It's not David that God wouldn't leave his soul in Hades. It's uh, It was Christ. Matter of fact, there are different words for hell in the Bible. I didn't have time to really get into that, uh, but there are different words. There's the word Sheol. I'm sure you understand and you know that. It has to do with the grave. It's the equivalent of Hades uh, in the uh, New Testament. And there's the word Tartarus, uh, Tartarus also. In your King James Version Bible, it's translated that over in chap uh, Luke chapter 16 in, in Peter when he discusses about the angels having lost their first estate. They're different words. That's why I focused and concentrated on the word Gehenna, where all the disobedient spirits go when they die, when they die. Gehenna is not used in the Bible anywhere for those who are alive. It's just not. It's either Hades, it's either Sheol, okay? But there are different words. Now, we have to deal with scholarship here. We have to deal with the language. If you understand that the Old Testament was uh, written in, in Hebrew, the New Testament was uh, written in Greek, we have to deal with the languages. We, we just can't observe the Passover and just to dismiss, be dismissive as if it doesn't count and then fill ourselves up with emotive language to try to prove our case. It's just not going to work. It's not going to work at all. You go to these passages of scripture and Psalms 80, 86, 13, you say, well, he's got to deal with that. He's telling me to deal with things. Well, he's got to deal with that. Well, it's easy to deal with because we're not dealing with anybody that has died. That rebukes your whole alleged argument. It has nothing whatsoever to do with the ones who have died, who have passed on. Gehenna is for those disobedient spirits that have died, not who are yet alive. You're misapplying scripture, my friend. You're misapplying scripture. Um, so you cannot try to use Gehenna and say, well, there's the Lord's anger. Gehenna, there's the Lord's anger. No, the Lord's anger isn't Gehenna. It's not Gehenna at all. Gehenna is specifically used for the death, for, for the disobedient spirits after they die. I yield my time. Are you there? Tech Shack, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you loud and clear. So, Captain Cotters, are you ready with your five-minute rebuttal? Yeah, I'm good to go. Now, before you do the five minute rebuttal, after that is when we have the hot seat, right? Right. And then he puts me on the hot seat first and then we swap. So our what's goals, the time on that? Uh, 10 minute, two 10 minute rounds. So gotcha. 10 minutes no consecutive problem. questions. Gotcha. Um, so now, Kadazav, you're ready. Do you need to share your screen or anything? And la, sir. All right. No sweat. Your time will start when you begin speaking. OK, so so it, it, I mean, damn me, I could freestyle now, Doc. I'm, I'm sorry you're so defeated and deflated now. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you you had so much steam before and now you just throwing in the towel. You spent five minutes on on sheer rhetoric talking about what you would do, what you might do, but what you didn't because you didn't refute anything I said. Um, but few things that you said, you said that there has to be a place. You said that there, there has to be a reoccurring place of judgment. That's what you said inside of your first round. Yes. Let's find out where the place of judgment is. Ecclesiastes 3 and 16. And moreover, I saw under the sun, the place of judgment. What's under the sun? <laughs> the earth is under the sun. Where did we see all those people get judged on earth under the sun? Where did we see all those people get delivered by hell under the sun? which is the earth where the Lord said his fire would burn. And moreover, I saw under the sun, the place of judgment, that wickedness was there and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. This is where judgment happens. This is where judgment takes place. Judgment takes place on the earth. You want to know where this reoccurring place happens that you were talking about? It happens right here. 
And then you with the with the lake of fire. We know that the lake of fire comes with the Lord's judgment and the Lord is going to judge Babylon like what we talked about earlier. This is Revelations, the 18th chapter. I'm just going to teach at this point. This ain't even a battle now. Now, now. now this is a damn seminar. You understand that after all these things I saw as Revelations 18 and 1, I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power and earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of her wrath and her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Why? Because what's going to happen is judgment, verse 9, and the kings Eslachia, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. You want to talk about the fire? It's because Babylon is going to burn and it's going to burn so bright that they're going to see that smoke inside of the distance because america is the lake of fire babylon's the lake of fire that's where people experience the second death at when the judgment comes and people are physically put to death y'all confuse and conflate the spiritual with the literal the literal with the spiritual y'all entire doctrine is reverse engineered and wired backwards it's terrible already like at this point it's like if i was to continue i'd feel like i'm punching down you get what I'm saying? Because you refuted nothing I said. You understand? Granted, they were alive. You said I didn't make my point. That was my point. My point was is that we get judged here while we're alive in this condition. You know what you haven't done? You haven't shown me anybody who's died. You haven't shown me this dimension in hell. You haven't shown me a statement of it. You haven't shown me somewhere where it validates it. You've shown me vain philosophy. You've shown me rhetoric. You understand? You've shown me what I said in 2 Peter 1 and 16. This is what you explained. See, what I did was I went to the Bible. I lined everything up. I went through and painted a beautiful and vivid picture. You said language and, and Greek. No, this is what you gave me. You gave me 2 Peter 1 and 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. You brought up a fable. That's why in your round, all I got was rhetoric. You refuted and addressed nothing I said. Nothing. You didn't go to any of the scriptures, anything. It's, it's terrible. This, this really felt like a layup. Honestly, I think, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, like I'm going to just yield my time, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'll yield the rest of the minute. At this point, it's just terrible. All right. Kadazai has yielded the rest of his time. That concludes the first two rounds of this debate. We're now going to go into what's called the hot seat of the debate. This would be 10 minutes. So the goal is for, I believe in the first round, Stacy is asking Kataza questions. So um, Stacy, of course, you want to utilize your time wisely. And I'm just laying out the groundwork for it. You want to utilize your time wisely. Kataza, you can't be too long-winded with your answers. What I will say, because Stacy is asking you the questions, let's say if Stacy asks you, uh, what do you think about America and Mexico, and you go to answer the question. When Stacy is satisfied with your answer, he can say, okay, I'm going to ask you the next question. This way it avoids you taking up too much of his time, of his 10 minutes, and the same thing will be applied to him, um, excuse me, to you when you ask him the questions. So Dr. Stacy, you have the full control of when you're satisfied with this answer as long as it's, as it's at least an answer like you don't want to be an asshole and neither side you don't want to be an asshole when you ask him a question just cut him off to ask the next question but if you do ask him a question both opponents you do have to give the other person the space to actually answer the question uninterrupted if it's a yes or no question before you expound you have to yield to yes or no so if I say this, is the sky blue, yes or no? And you think it's gray, you're going to say no, because I think it's gray. Or yes, because the way the sun hitting it is making it gray. But you have to say yes or no to any yes or no questions. Do both opponents understand the rules? Yeah, I understand. Yes, understand, absolutely. No problem. So, Dr. Absolutely. 
Got you. So, Dr. Stacy, are you ready to begin asking Kadazai questions? Uh, first question. I well. Wait, wait, I'm we, saying, are you ready? I'm asking if you're ready. No, no, no. Ready. I'm not ready. I'm, okay. I got a question. Are we? Is this the questions on heaven or this question on hell or it doesn't? Any matter. whatever questions you because he's on the hot seat. It's whatever questions you feel like asking him. It could be on heaven or hell. Of course, it want to be on the subject, but you're not isolated to a particular type. You can ask whatever questions that you want to ask him. Um, also, too, if I have to intervene as a moderator, the time will be paused. So if you if it gets to like five minutes and 43 seconds and I got to fix a little muddiness, excuse me, muddiness of the waters, I would definitely, the time will be paused. Once it picks back up, Whoever was asking the question, the time doesn't start when you re-ask the question. The time will restart when the other person is answering the question. All right. I just want to make that part clear. So, Dr. Stacy, you will be asking Kadaza questions first. Are you ready? I'm ready. No problem. The time will start. Now, I won't be unmuted during this. Excuse me. Yeah, I won't be muted during this time just in case I have to fix the money of the waters. But the time will start, Dr. Stacy, once you begin speaking. All right. My first question um, to Captain Chaktasa. Did Jesus tell the truth when he taught doctrine? Yes. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh, in, cometh unto the Father but by me. Did he tell the truth? Yes. Did he tell any lies with anything he taught? No. Okay. So when Jesus when Jesus said that uh, heaven is a place, and let me quote a scripture. When he said that heaven is a place, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where these do not break through and steal. Did he tell the truth there? Yes. So according to this verse, heaven is a place. That's what it said. Okay. You just conceded the debate. In Matthew eleven twelve, 12, Jesus also said, blessed are ye. When men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake, rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. When Jesus said rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. Was he talking about a place? Yes. Okay. Wonderful. He just conceded again. I want everyone who's listening um, to see exactly what's what's how he's answering these questions. Okay, let's let's go. Let's move uh, to the kingdom. When 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 uh, John said, and John in Revelations chapter one verses uh, uh, nine. Let me let me get that real quickly. I want you to see this. When he said in Revelations, oh, that's the wrong screen. We got time here. There's no need to rush. I'll find it here in a minute. When John said in Revelations chapter one, verses nine, that he was in the kingdom, he was in the kingdom. Was he talking future or was he talking present? I'm sorry, repeat the question. In Revelations chapter 1 and verse 9, John said that he was in, tri in the tribulation and in the kingdom. In the kingdom. Was he talking present or was he talking uh, something yet future? You want me to repeat it again? I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to read the script. If you don't mind, if I read the scripture? Well, absolutely, you read can, it. Please, please, please. Hold on. One, one second, because this is the second time he asked the question. Pause this time. You paused it, Doctor Stacy. You're going to answer again once we get clarity. Then the time will start. So, Doctor Stacy, you can ask that question again. 
I just wanted to read the scripture so I make sure we're on the same page. I, I don't know if that, he's misquoting it or not. That is no problem. No problem at all. That, that's fine. But it's time where we pause while we get the clarity. That's fine. Okay. In Revelations 1, 9, I'll read it. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in, in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. My question is, according to this passage, John says he was in tribulation and in the kingdom. In the kingdom. Is mm -hmm. that present or is that something yet future? You can start this time. He's talking about in that moment. He's talking about that moment. Mm -hmm. So he was in the kingdom at that moment. In the vision, yes. No, th no, this isn't a vision. He did this. This isn't a vision. This, this is what John is saying. Uh to the church, but you answered it. You 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 answered it correctly. You you said yes. You answered it correctly. So that's that. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm answering the question. What I'm saying is he's having a vision right now. Okay, so you're saying you're saying that it's not. Then he's not in the kingdom. I'm saying that's right now he's having a vision. That's exactly what I said. Okay, I understand. That's exactly what mm -hmm. you said. But my question to you is. Uh, is the vision according to you is the vision that he's having you say it's a vision is that future or is that in the present he's having a vision in the present about the future okay all right he's having a vision in the present about the future all right now let's look at uh, colossians chapter 1 and verse 13. the apostle paul writes in colossians chapter 1 verses 13 and let me find it real quick here i don't know why i can't all right who he he's talking to the colossian brethren the colossian christians he says who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son now paul says that the the christians were translated into the kingdom of his dear son is that present or is that yet future? He's talking about right then and there. All right. Thank you. I appreciate those concessions. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me go to some of the things you, you said, and I want to ask you the questions ab uh, about it. You quoted 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9, and you said, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And right after you said that, you mentioned the Christian church. Can you explain to me what do you mean when you say the Christian church? When I say the Christian church, I'm talking about the modern day Christian church. I'm talking about the corruption that Christianity has become. I'm talking about the multitude and plethora of different denominations that all teach directly against the scriptures from the Roman Catholic Church all the way on down to non-denominationals. Non okay. All right. I appreciate that. Now. Um, have you ever heard of the Church of Christ, my friend? Are you talking about, oh, I, can't, I can't ask you a question. In, in, in what capacity? Can you elaborate? Have you ever heard of the Church of Christ? Church of in, Christ. Can you, can you elaborate? Because, you know what I'm saying, there's a Romans place called chapter, the yes, Church of Christ yes. up the block. Yes, Romans 16, 16, the Apostle Paul says, salute one another with the holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. Okay. Have you ever heard of the Church of Christ? You just read it. I just heard about it. You just heard about it. That's what you're saying. You just heard it. You hadn't heard it before. You just you just read it. I just heard it right now. What okay. about it? All right. Do you know do you know if the Church of Christ is a denomination? Are you talking about okay, I, I want to clarify. You're talking about the church then? It's so like hold wait, hold on, hold on. Um, pause the time because are you asking him a question and that's not the rules so dr stacy can you just I'm, reword I'm, it I'm, I'm trying to clarify i'm not trying to ask him a question like yeah. i'm trying to understand yeah, because I'm, that, that's yeah. fine um dr stacy if you could just reword it to where he doesn't have to ask you a question about it it'll make okay, it a I'll, little try, bit I'll try to do that the reason i asked it the way i did because he lumped all he lumped he he lumped the christian church as one and so that's why I asked him, had he ever heard of the Church of Christ? Now, I'll, now as a moderator, I'll ask for clarity. Are you trying to 
separate this particular church or are you trying to show that there are other churches that are different from what he perceives am both, i saying that right yes both both of those because i wanted to go to the scripture and help him to understand something okay now in, for time's sake it might be better to assume he doesn't know the particular church you're asking and then stand on that principle that way you can ask him the question because when you ask him blanky questions, or and this goes for both sides. If he did it, I would do the same thing. No problem. No problem. When you when you ask question, when you ask such a broad question, because of course, all right, what are you doing? Slow, right now? Slow, slow, slow. When you ask different questions, excuse me, when you ask such a broad question about Christian, different Christian organizations, it's gonna be so broad when you're focused on the group that you're talking about. So focus on the group you're talking about, ask the question, and I believe you said you wanted to read a scripture. It'll make it easier so that way he's not asking you a question because I don't want him to ask you any questions. Okay, I understand. I understand. No problem. So um, you're going to re-ask the question, and then once you, after you ask the question, your time will be uh, started back up. Okay, no, I'm not talking about the Church of God in Christ. The Church of God in Christ is not the Church of Christ. The Church of Christ was established on the, on the first Pentecost after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and is not lumped in with no denomination. It began on Pentecost of Acts chapter 2 in AD 33, somewhere around in there. And so when he lumps the Christian church, um, and I'm sure he was talking about me as well, he lumps us with denominations. That's wrong. And that's why I'm trying to help him to understand that uh, the congregation that I belong to is the congregation of the Lord's people that was established in Acts chapter 2. We uphold the Bible doctrine. We are not a denomination. So I, I just wanted to make that clear to him so he can have understanding. He had never heard of the Church of Christ. He had just heard of it now, and I would invite him to do some investigation about the Church of Christ. So let's move on. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9, when he mentioned the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, and Paul begins to enumerate all those sins in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9. Well, that's just not to the Christian church. That's to everyone. That's anybody. It doesn't say in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, he's talking about the Christian church. He's talking about individuals. Okay, so are you asking a question or are you preaching? Can't do that, Kadaza. Sorry, I'm sorry. If he take whatever he takes his time to do, that's what he takes his time to do. You can't do that. Hey, if hey, you, uh, you, Captain, Captain, Tazari, you might want to, the time is paused. You want, you want to, to ask the stop. That's not how to stop. His time is his time. His time should have been running. If he don't ask a question, that's on him. And that's why, that's why I asked Cap, because the clock was stopped. I'm like, what are we doing here? Yeah, I, I wanted him to know the clock was stopped. No problem. His clock should have never been stopped. Nobody told you to stop that clock. When I told you to start it, you should have just started. Whatever he does with his 10 minutes, that's his 10 minutes. If he want to talk and preach, that's what he does. All right? Go ahead, Dr. Stacy. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I wanted to, uh, uh, Captain uh, Chaknazar, you mentioned about how the Lord destroys your soul and body in the Lord. Matthew chapter 10, verses 28. Are you aware that we're going to have um, a bodies conducive for eternity? Can can you elaborate on that? First John chapter three verses two. The yeah. Bible informs us that we're going to have. Uh, so like it, so like it, one, one second. When he asked you that question, you asked him a question, Kadazai. You can't do that. You should have just. I, I said, don't. I don't. But I don't understand. That's fine. It's better to say I don't understand. I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm going to say I don't I'm understand. Not allow him, I'm not going to allow him to ask you a question, but you keep asking him questions. It's better to say I don't understand. Uh, repeat the question. But don't ask him a question. Okay, Salakia. Uh, no, elaborate, please. Okay. First John 3, 2, the Bible informs us that we're going to have bodies like Christ. And Christ has a resurrect. He's in his resurrected body. And we're going to have bodies conducive for eternity. So when Jesus, when Jesus says not to fear him that can destroy the body, but destroy both soul and body in hell, um, do you understand that's because we're going to have bodies conducive for eternity? I would disagree in the context. You would disagree in the context of 1 John 3, 2 or Matthew 10, 30, 10 28? I, 
I would disagree in the context of your understanding and and what when you're trying to place these. You know what I'm saying? Like as far as we're talking about, you're talking about. You understand having a body like Christ, which is something that hasn't happened yet. So everyone else, I'm trying very hard not to ask a rhetorical question right now. Everyone else before then, they don't have those bodies. When it talks about even uh, your body being trans, uh, being uh, uh, in the twinkling of an eye being transformed, that's something that hasn't happened yet either. So what you're talking about right now with Christ was isolated and an anomaly. So I would not agree with you in the context of what you're presenting. Okay. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much for that. First uh, John 3, 2. Let me just read this. Behold, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when we is when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. First Corinthians chapter 15, the Bible teaches us about our uh, new bodies, the resurrected bodies that, that we're going to have. So that's fine if you don't agree with that uh, contextually and, and what I'm talking about. Um, let me, I got 20 seconds. Okay, I'll just go ahead and yield at this time. All right. We just completed that part, that portion of um, the hot seat round. That was uh, Dr. Stacy Mobley to Captain Kadazai. So now, we, <clears throat> so now we do the reverse. So in this ten minutes, it'll be Kadazai asking questions to Dr. Stacy Mobley. Um, just a brief recap, Kadazai, you want your question to be concise. It's your ten minutes to do whatever you see fit. If you ask a yes or no question, Dr. Stacy, you do have to say yes or no, and then you can expound. If Kadazai is satisfied with your answer. He can't interrupt you and ask the next question because that's his time. If you ask him questions, I would do just like I did the last round and stop you from asking questions. If there's anything that needs to be muddied in the waters or cleared up, we will pause the time, get it right, have the question repeated. And then once you begin to answer, then the time will pick up after that. All right. So, Kadaz, are you ready? I'm ready. I know so the time will start once you begin speaking. All right. So since you didn't address this earlier, Jonah two and two and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell cried. I and now heardest my voice is Jonah alive. Yes, he is. Where does the scripture say he is? In the whale's belly. Um, it doesn't say that he's in the belly of hell. Yes, he's in the belly of hell, but that's not Gehenna. Uh, I'm not saying that it's Gehenna. I'm asking you, where is this hell? In Jonah's, in the in the whale's belly. And, okay, so hell is, in this context, is inside this fish's belly. And is this fish on earth? Yes. Okay, so now, Jonah's been afflicted. Is this a, is this a positive or a negative condition? For Jonah, it's definitely a negative. It's a negative condition on earth. Thank you for that. Yes, that's true. Let's okay, great. Let's move on to the next one. This is Revelations 5. And where are we going? We're going to 10. Uh, it says, And hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth. Where are we going to reign with Christ according to the scripture? Christians are reigning on earth right now. That didn't answer my question. I said, where are we going to reign with Christ, according to this scripture? Who is we? Oh, I'm, I'm not supposed to ask a question. I'm sorry. Not, my, not my, okay. my, see, you see, you see, listen, it's not that easy. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah I got you. I, you I got you. I'm with you. It's I, all right. It's all right. I, I just want I just want to, I just need a clarity. That's all. Well, well, okay. So let me let me clarify here, right? So this is Revelations. The 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 we that it's talking about is the hundred and forty four thousand. How do we know? Revelations five and nine says, and they sung a new song, saying, "Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou was slain and has redeemed us." to God by blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. This is the scene that's also painted inside of Revelations, the seventh chapter. These are the people who's reigning. So when we read, and thou hast made us 
unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth. This is talking about after Christ returns. So where are these people and Christ reigning? I disagree that it's talking about Christ's uh, return. It's talking about Christ has ascended. Uh, these individuals are Christians who've been purchased, who've been redeemed by the blood of Christ. And they are now kings and priests and they are reigning on earth. That's my uh, how I would answer that. OK, well, just just to respond, the reason as to why that wouldn't make absolutely any sense is because okay. when you read inside of Revelation 7 and it talks about. After this, I beheld, lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations, kindreds, people, and tongues, just like what we read before, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palms in their hands. So what we see here is that this would have to happen after Christ comes back, rules, and then gives out rulership to these men, which is why they're now kings and priests. So to clarify, you understand, I would disagree with you. The scriptures would say that that's incorrect. Now, okay. I'm going to go back to Psalms 86 and 13. Okay. Um, you want to get there with me? Sure. I just want to make sure that, you know what I'm saying, you could see what I'm, uh, I'm reading as well. So this is Psalms 86 and 13. For great is thy mercy towards me. We agree that this is David speaking about the Lord. Yes. Mm hmm. And it says, and thou has delivered my soul from the lowest hell. Is David alive? Yes, he's alive. Where is this lowest hell that David's speaking of? Sheol. And is that on earth? It's unseen. It's the abode of the unseen, the equivalent to Hades in the New Testament. So it's not on earth? No. So David is talking about the mercy shown to him. And he was delivered his soul from the lowest hell. How was his soul delivered from the lowest hell? When God brought him through whatever afflictions that he had to go through in life. Oh, so you mean the afflictions like Jonah went through on earth when he was in the belly of hell? Yes, both of them were still alive. Oh, okay, both of them were still alive and, they, and their souls were delivered from hell. No, their souls were not delivered from hell in the sense of the equivalence of spirit. It, I didn't ask you about spirit. I just said the scripture says, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. Well, the word soul can be translated as as uh, uh, man. It, can, it also can be translated as, as, as man, not necessarily the spirit. So his soul was not delivered from the lowest hell as what it says right here. Yeah, but you have to understand the context and what he's discussing. So where is the lowest hell? Wherever David was in affliction, he's using that language to describe his condition that he was in and how God delivered him from that. I'd like but to it, but David I, but David hadn't died. I'd like to I'd like to thank you for agreeing with me that hell is a condition on earth. I appreciate you yielding the debate just it. like that. <laughs> but now let's it. let's go back to let's go back to Deuteronomy okay. you know what I'm saying, 32 and 21. All right. What it says, uh, I'll start at 22. For a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn on to the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her increase. Where is this fire burning and where is the lowest hell according to the scripture? Where, where, what passage is it again? Uh, Deut Deuteronomy 32 and 22. Oh, yeah. 32 and 22. I thought you said 32. We won't count that as a question. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm messing with you, man. I'm it's good. It's all you. good. Okay. <laughs> uh, more fires kindled in my anger and shall burn to the lowest hell. And shall consume the earth. Okay. Now, what's your question? My question is, where is this hell and 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 uh, uh, what it, and where is this fire consuming? This this hell is uh, again, it's not. Let me answer it. It's not Gehenna. All right. It's I didn't bring up Gehenna. I don't know why you're bringing up Gehenna. I'm talking right now, right here. Where is this location? The reason I'm bringing it up because because Gehenna is described as those who've died. You're dealing with individuals in context. Why don't you focus on the question at hand and the scripture at hand? Yeah, it's 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 here. Where is here? It's a it's a metaphor 
for it's what? A meta- it's a metaphor for what? Of a bad or, or of a really bad condition. Uh, where? It's not. It's not eternal. Where? On Earth. Oh, okay, thank you. I appreciate it. That was that was like pulling teeth right there. All you had no, to say that, was that's, that's, all, that's all, all you all you had to say was this hell is a condition on Earth. That's that's it. That's what you just agreed with. I mean, nice and smooth. You laughing because you know, because you're really agreeing with me. I don't even know why we had this debate. You really agree with me. I'm laughing because you're the great twister. Uh, I ain't the great twister. That's the that's the word of God, brother. All right, go ahead, my man. You do. I good. appreciate you. Oh yeah, I know that. You ain't gotta remind me of that. I'm glad yeah. you know. Yeah. So now right. this is. Um, I'm going to now go to ecclesiastes uh-huh and i'm going to go to ecclesiastes the third chapter okay because you didn't address any of this when i said it and it says and moreover i saw under the sun what is under the sun under the sun the expression under the sun in the book ecclesiastes has to do uh with apart from god being apart from uh apart from god that's the context of the book of ecclesiastes so under the sun is not talking about on earth. No, it's living apart from God. Where are we living apart from God? These individuals in Ecclesiastes are those who are not in the covenant relationship with God. That's why Solomon. Uh, uh, are they on Pluto? Yeah. On what? Are they on Pluto? Uh, are they on Venus? Are they on Mercury? Where are they under the sun? <laughs> They're on earth. Oh, they're on earth. Okay. Yeah. And it says under the sun, which is on earth, the place of wow. judgment. Where's the place of judgment according which, to the scripture? Which pat which scripture are you in? I'm in Ecclesiastes <laughs> three and sixteen. Three sixteen. And you say what now? What's your question? My my question is according to this, where's the place of judgment? The place of judgment is taking place on earth. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor. But it's it's not it's not the judge it's not the the end judgment. God has different judgments, judgment for sin, judgment for punishment. It's not judgment for eternity. I think that's my time anyway. Okay. I I I, yeah, I, that, I that definitely that definitely completes completes that time. Um, I think after this we just got closing arguments. But before I do give y'all y'all closing. Um, definitely was a good debate between Dr. Stacey and Captain Kadazai on the subject of heaven and hell. I want to appreciate you guys for having excellent decorum. Usually when we have the back and forth, we always got to, you know, correct it and stuff like that. So we was able to do that. So we're going to do a closeout. So Dr. Stacey, what are we giving? Three minutes closeout? Yep. Sure. Like, you know, just go whatever, you want, whatever you want to do, moderator. <laughs> That's what definitely the moderator. I appreciate you recognizing who I am. I recognize your moderation. Hey, just call me butter. Just call just call me butter. I ain't, I ain't calling him that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just call me butter. That's red. It's a lot. <laughs> General Ivan said he never said that on the show. He said he never said that. He just gave me my new nickname. So like he don't even know. He gave me my new nickname. Um, so Stacy, being that you went first, um, you definitely will have will take three minutes to close out, um, give your closing arguments, and then we'll follow that up with Captain Kadazai. So once you begin speaking, um, we'll go ahead and mute and the floor is yours. All right. I first of all want to thank thank you all for this uh, opportunity to come. I'm kind of proud of myself. I did what uh, I didn't do what I was hoping I didn't do. So I'm proud of myself for that. But I appreciate this opportunity. So far as debate is concerned, um, it it was a a good discussion. Um, I proved my proposition. He didn't touch not one of my arguments. He didn't touch the fact of uh, my proof that heaven is indeed a place. He admitted in the questions that Jesus said, he, he admitted twice that Jesus said that heaven is a place which did away with his whole proposition of the debate tonight that uh, heaven is a a condition. He also, and when it, when it came to hell, uh, didn't touch Gehenna. He chided it. He didn't like it, but he did not deal with it. 
he did not refute it. And he tried to go to other different passages out of context that has nothing to do with after we die. Has to do with everything the state while we're here on earth has nothing to do with after we die. That's the hell I was talking about. Gehenna, when you die, that's where you go. Did he touch it? No. Did he, uh, uh, he, he, he chided it. He didn't like it, but he didn't, he didn't prove. Did he prove his proposition? Did he prove his proposition that, uh, uh, heaven is a is a condition. No, didn't touch it. Did he prove his proposition that hell is a condition? He thought he did, but he didn't because he didn't touch Gehenna. He couldn't touch Gehenna. There was nothing he could say about it. He couldn't refute it. He couldn't deal with the Greek. He couldn't deal with it. So he goes into all the, these lambasting and 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 having fun, making fun of the Christian church. And yet he admitted he didn't even know what the Church of Christ was. First time he ever heard of it. That it's not a denomination. It's not a part of the so-called Christian church that he wants to lump us in. So when you look at this bait, if you're honest, all right, if you're interested in the truth, you saw tonight that I proved my proposition. Did he touch any of my arguments? Did he touch any of the syllogism? Did he ask for them? He asked to bring up any syllogism and touch the syllogism, whether they were valid, whether they were sound. No, he didn't because he couldn't. He couldn't do anything with that. Did he touch what I talked about, the kingdom being here now? He admitted that the kingdom is here. He tried to do away with it by saying it's a vision that John is talking about the future. That was after he admitted that it was in the present. He admitted that that uh, uh, what Jesus said about uh, heaven was in the present. He admitted that John said he was in the kingdom. He actually He actually gave up. He gave up the whole discussion with my first question. When I asked him, did Jesus ever tell a lie? Did he always tell the truth? He said yes. And then when I asked him, did Jesus tell the truth about the kingdom in heaven? He said yes. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and move to Captain Kadazar. Um, You would now give your closing arguments. Um, are you ready? Yes. Are you the time will start when you begin speaking? I, I think it's funny. Um, I don't know what debate he was watching, but if anybody turns around, I completely proved my premise in showing every single context of what heaven is. I showed heaven as the context of another dimension where the Lord's at. I showed heaven as a context of the kingdom of heaven being within you. I showed heaven as a context of being rulership of the planet Earth. And yes, he asked me a question. He says, is heaven a place? Yes, heaven is a place, a place on earth. You should have been more specific. You understand? Heaven is a place of rulership on the planet earth that I showed and proved over and over again. And here's the other thing for anybody who wants to go back about the Gehenna. Gehenna is the same word that's used in Matthews 10 and 28. I then showed how your body and soul could be inside of hell and showed every instance of where it was while you were alive, denouncing the entire concept of Gehenna being strictly when you perish and leave here. That's the fable and the fairy tale that they believe. That's the fable and the fairy tale of them not understanding life and death or heaven and hell. Heaven, the kingdom of heaven is rulership of the planet Earth. You understand? Out on Earth. You understand that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is simple. It is laid out plain and flat. Maybe he wasn't paying attention. Maybe it's a little bit of cognitive dissonance. Maybe his indoctrination is too loud for him because I don't want to say that he lied on me. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? Maybe he is just being uh, unintentionally disingenuous in what he perceived. But when I stated my premise, I didn't say that heaven is only a condition. I said hell is a condition. And I said that heaven, it, as far as the kingdom of heaven is concerned, is rulership over the over earth and showed that it has not come yet because Christ has not returned with those 200,000 thousand angels. He hasn't given out crowns. He hasn't turned around and taken over those nations. They haven't built those walls. You have not seen the kingdom of heaven descending from the clouds, as I had stated earlier, which is why you have to endure to the end. That was the question I forgot to ask him. Has the end happened yet? Are we still in the last days? Which really would have just, you understand, burst your entire bubble. So I, I believe I totally annihilated you on all of these premises. This is the proof that the Christian church is delusional. And everybody knows that 
Christ Church is non-denominational. When you asked me, I said the modern church, the present church today. The church of the past is not the church of today. Should have been a little bit more specific with your questions, my man. Better luck next time. I yield. Hey, is this specific or Pacific? So I, you know, hey, what? I appreciate you joining. Been whatever you want it to be. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we appreciate y'all joining us for this um, good debate between Kevin Kadaza and Dr. Stacy Mobley. Dr. Stacy, you know you always welcome here. You do excellent decorum. Uh, Kadaza, excellent decorum. Uh, Kevin Dzoyak, moderation is always, you know, like. Pat oh, yourself on the back real quick. Why don't you? It's Buck. It's Buck. Listen, Karabi, y'all, hey, they said it's butter. You know what I'm saying? I got the butters. Listen, I make butters. I'm light-skinned. They like to call me butter. I'm calling a monkey. I'm going to make a butter called butter. I got black butter, gold butter. Any type of butter you need, I just got that. <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will call you Montekia. I got that butter. You know what I'm saying? Hey, um, Elder Yara in the chat, man, reach out to me tomorrow. Um, I know there was a platform, Kadaz, I was mentioning about the debate we got um, about me coming on that platform. Reach out to me tomorrow. Yeah, I, I wanted to get you in there the week of because it'll be a little Yeah, that, that's this week. So maybe Wednesday. So Elder Yara... Let's look to do like a pre-debate type of conversation this coming Wednesday. I have a debate with him this sun that, that Sunday on uh, is reincarnation in the Bible, some shit like that. So that's the debate we got tomorrow. I'll be debating Joel Davis, white crime versus black crime. Which one is worse? Why would a white boy want to challenge me on this particular subject? Who? <laughs> Let me tell you, the disrespect, listen, the disrespect of white people, how they perceive black intellect is amazing to me. Why would any, one thing you should never want to battle a nigga on, excuse me, an intelligent Israelite brother like myself is on which crime is worse. There is no worse crime that exists on the planet. Wait, so obviously he thinks black crime is worse, worse than, than white, white crime. crime. Ask the animals whose crimes are worse. Yeah, that, that, that's what I was going to ask you. Like, are, are we starting from like last year or can we can we go back to like 1942 to the present? Hey, I do whatever I want. hey when I'm on Kill Stream, I, I think I'm the first black guy in the Hall of Fame. Right. Right. And they on the right. That's because I'm butter. That's because I got because I'm butter. <laughs> so that's tomorrow. I gotta get I gotta get a new laugh. I hate that I laugh like that sometimes, but sometimes the shit just be so funny. But that's tomorrow at 7 p.m. We're gonna be right back here at headquarters tomorrow, seven o'clock, live debate. And then Tuesday, I got another debate, Michael Holloway. I'm gonna do that right here in the school. Then Sunday, I'll be right here again. Cat Damn, likes to so fight, like, y'all. Cat likes to again. fight. So that's this is that's it, Friday. Is, that's like three debates in like nine days. I'm night. about to whoop all y'all ass. That's butterhood. I, I, I'm that's gonna bring my Thanos. Karab, I'm gonna bring my Thanos glove. My Thanos glove gonna be sitting right there. Oh blessing. shit! I was like, what happened to Quara? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna bring my gauntlet glove. The shit gonna be blinking. <laughs> I wish I had five Girl, debates because it'd be five stones. First, I'm gonna get the power stone. I'm gonna knock the white boy out with the power stone. Yeah. Then I'm gonna take the rest of them out after that. You know, you remember what Banner said? He said Thanos already has the power stone, which makes him the strongest being on ever exist in the universe. <laughs> so let me let me go yeah. with that. With Listen, that, man, we're gonna highlight y'all. Good, that's right. Man. Listen, butterhood is coming soon, right? He said butterhood. <laughs> Butter. It's butterhood. Hey, <laughs> butterhood. Listen, use the butter. Coming soon, the butterhood. Oh, it's so much wordplay I could do with butter. Yeah, you can butterhood. Listen, which one of y'all ribs with the much polygamy? Right, they should have, I should have right. put my face. I should have listen. I should have put my face on the damn oil. Damn Much right. polygamy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Who don't want what? What? What sister don't want to get buttered up? 
Yeah, come get buttered up. My butters is smooth. I guarantee you, y'all been buttering your ribs up with them butters. You already know that. Facts. And with that, oh, my require. I'm a, my, me and my required gonna go to council because he got me saying facts. I wasn't saying facts before my required. My required, I'm gonna take you to council. That's a joke, y'all. That's my brother. With that, we see y'all tomorrow live on Cross the Line Radio. That's right, you right, right, boy. Shalom, Lord Christ. Y'all wish me shabbat shalom. Y'all wish me shabbat shalom. That's right. Stay buttered up. Oh, me, I wish me shabbat shalom.